there, Isaiah chapter 10, and we're going to verse 33. And it says, Behold, the Lord God of hosts will lop the bows, balls with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down, and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an axe, and Lebanon will fall by the majestic one. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord." He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for what you're speaking to us. Thank you for what you're doing in this service today. As we come together to celebrate Christmas, may the truth of your word speak to us today. And Lord, may it help us see and receive what you're wanting to do in our lives. In your name, Jesus, amen. Well, we have been taking December to look at some of these promises of Isaiah. And the reason we're doing it is we're wanting to look at reasons people may not be able to celebrate Christmas, things that are going on in their life that's keeping them from enjoying this time of year where we reflect on what God's done. And so we started out with the prophecy that Isaiah gave in in chapter 40 where he says, Comfort, comfort ye my people. And we focused on the fact that, that sometimes people get in the way of Christmas being a good experience for us. And we talked about the fact that Christmas is not about people but about Jesus. And then last week, we we got into the prophecy where it said, a virgin will conceive and you will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And and we were talking about fearful situations where we said sometimes because we're facing things that are bringing, bringing fear in our lives, we end up missing out on what God wants to do in our life. And we should remember that because Christ is with us, he's going to fight our battles. Today, we're talking about a third situation. And that is maybe we've gone through something that has been so devastating and so terrible in this last year that our hope is gone and that our joy is gone. And it's hard for us to think about anything that's a celebration. And as we're looking at this prophecy, it's really addressing that. But it's really, of the prophecies we've looked at, this is probably the one that when Isaiah gave it, you know, these guys, as they were prophesying these things, they didn't always know what they were talking about. And, and the New Testament tells us that, that they were eager to kind of understand what they were saying. And I got to think that what I just read to you guys, when Isaiah was given that prophecy, he was scratching his head going, am I right on this? This doesn't make any sense. What in the world does it mean? But it means something very powerful to us today, something that we need to grasp. And it's important, maybe, you may wonder, well, why are we up in chapter 10 before we go into chapter 11? And I hope that maybe maybe you know this, maybe you don't. But, you know, the the Bible was written as kind of a letter. The authors of the Bible would sit down. And so Isaiah, he wrote out his prophecies, and it was just a a solid book. And there wasn't chapter divisions and verse divisions. And and John, when he wrote, it was just all, and there it is, there's the book. There wasn't the chapters and the verses. And somebody a few hundred years later, I imagine it was some pastor who got tired of saying to his congregation, okay, we're going to the book of John, and you'll need to go about a third of the way in there, all about nine, ten pages, and go down a little bit. You know, sooner or later, somebody figured, maybe if we give some numbers of where to find this, it'll make it easier. And so it's hundreds of years after the Bible was written, the chapter and verse divisions were given that they set down to make it easy to find things and and know what people are talking about. And so we're grateful for that, right? It makes it easier to find things. But the kind of downside of that is occasionally there was a thought that was going on and whoever broke things down into chapters, 
maybe kind of cut into the middle of the thought. And that's what's happening here with this prophecy today because chapter 10 is, is kind of starting this prophecy where it's talking about, maybe you're thinking about cutting down the forest of Lebanon, what's that about? And, and we've been talking about the fact that, that Isaiah was a prophet, but the prophets often were poets. And so there's a lot of figurative imagery that goes into what they're saying. And so what Isaiah is saying here in chapter 10 as he's speaking to us is he's letting us know that God's getting ready to take care of the Assyrians. And he says it this way, he says, Behold, the Lord God of hosts will lop the bowls, balls with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an axe and Lebanon will fall by the majestic one. And so what's that saying? Well, it's talking to these people about their big fear, the Assyrian army. And, and I could tell you stories about what the Assyrians would do but this is a mixed service, and I don't even think I would tell you in a regular service. Let's just say they were horrible invaders. They did terrible things to the people they would conquer. It was, it was bloody, it was nasty, it was bad, and everybody was afraid of them. And so what God is saying here, what you fear as a people, I'm going to take care of. I'm getting ready to come, cut them down. They look to you like the mighty forests of Lebanon, but I'm getting ready to chop them down. They're just going to be a bunch of stumps by the time you have to think about them again. I'm, I'm going to handle this. And so this is good news to the people of Israel. They've got to, they've got to be rejoicing because what's happened in their time, Jerusalem's still standing. The Assyrians had tried, but a couple things that happened is God delivered them but in the time that the Assyrians were around, they had pretty well stomped out northern Israel. They had wiped out all the countries around. They'd invaded Egypt. They'd done all these things. And they'd even forced the people of Judah to be paying this tribute. And so they'd seen, and even some of the cities of Judah had been invaded and, and destroyed and wiped out by them. And so cities were gone. Relatives were gone. Their treasury was gone. Allies were gone. All these things had been removed. And somebody probably said in, in Judah, well, you know, we say when, when we've been through a lot, it can't get any worse than this. How many of y'all have ever said that one before? And usually when you say that, what does somebody say back to you? Don't say that. Don't, don't say that. Well, they would have been right in not saying that because the Babylonians were going to come after the Assyrians, and what the Assyrians didn't do to Judah, the Babylonians were going to do. And so as we look at what's going to happen, it seems like a terribly hopeless situation for them, that it's going to be bad. But what Isaiah is giving us in this prophecy is that there is hope for Israel. There is a future. Why is there a future? Well, because there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. Now, i got to tell you as I read that, that doesn't sound too hopeful. Does it to you all? A shoot from the stump of Jesse. Okay, good to know. How exciting. What is that talking about? Well, this is actually, let's just take this stump of Jesse part, and then we'll kind of work the rest of this in. And what we discover about Jesse is that he was a character in the Old Testament, and he was father to somebody kind of famous. And maybe the kids from Children's Church can tell us who that is. Do y'all remember anybody in the Bible who killed a giant with a slingshot? Who is it, y'all? Okay, I hear some people that's not in Children's Church answering the question. <laughs> Oh, David, you got it. Okay, so you guys, you guys get it. And so Jesse was the father of King David. And King David ends up being, we've been talking about him on Wednesday night, he ends up becoming this incredible king for Israel. And, and the nation, it conquers a lot of new land. It becomes wealthy. It, it advances. Things are good. David's son Solomon comes. And, and this is like the golden age of Israel. It is unbelievable all the good things that are happening, all of the incredible things 
that are taking place. And, and so it's so exciting to, to watch this happening and, and coming together. But after Solomon dies, things start not going so good. The nation divides, and it's just a little bit of kind of the southern part is left for the descendants of David to be king over. And they are very poor. They're struggling. They're invaded constantly. It, they're fighting group after group. And then all of a sudden, they're dealing with those Assyrians. And then the Babylonians come several times. The kings that have descended from David, every king that rules, it's, 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 they're tied to David. They're kind of his lineage. But some of them, they're good. But others are terrible kings. And they unfortunately end up with some terrible ones there at their end. And the Babylonians take care of all this chaos, all this terrible stuff that's going on. And what they do is they come and they destroy Jerusalem. They kill a lot of people. They end up taking the rest as slaves back to Babylon. And so things seem done for the Jews. It seems like, like everything's over. It seems like those, that, those kings that had descended from David, that their line is done because the Babylonians remove them from power. And for 600 years, this is it. And, and it ends up that after the Babylonians are conquered by the Persians, that some of the Jews come back to this destroyed Jerusalem. They rebuild the city, but the nation never really is much of a nation again because after the Persians comes Greeks, and after the Greeks come the Romans. And so this is just a little, almost like a ping pong ball being bounced from invader to invader. They don't have a king. They don't have anybody really leading them. But all of a sudden, God remembers a promise that he'd never forgotten, but he made a promise to David that you are going to have a descendant from your line who will rule forever. And it's at this point, as the nation is at its most crumbled place, it's been dominated by everyone around in a very poor part of this nation that even the people of Judah kind of look down on this area of Nazareth, an area of Bethlehem. They, they, this area, suddenly, there is a baby born in a manger. And this is going to be the one that's going to make a difference. This is the shoot that's going to come up from that stump. Just like the Assyrians had been taken out and were nothing more than stumps. They were never to rise again. We don't have to worry a lot about Assyrians anymore, do we? They're not, they're, they're not around. They're, the Assyrians are gone. They're, they're lost in history. It's now part of Iraq where, where their empire once was. And it's kind of, kind of forgotten. But God didn't forget the stump of Judah. He didn't forget his work. Christ came. He was the shoot that became a fruitful branch. And just a little side note about Isaiah's prophecy here of what happens, this word branch. The town of Nazareth where Jesus grew up in, in Hebrew, means branch. Did you know that? And so when they called Jesus, when they referred to him, they referred to him as Jesus of Nazareth. And so what that would be in Hebrew is Jesus the branch. And so Isaiah is saying he's going to be a branch. And from his roots, there's going to be fruit. What kind of fruit would Jesus produce? Well, I'm looking at a church full of it this morning. We are the fruit of what Christ has done. But there's also a, a, a prophecy here that speaks still to us today. And what it speaks is this. Just as, as Christ came up from that stump, and he became a shoot out of it, and he brought life where there had been death, God still specializes in working on stumps and bringing out life. And this is a reminder to those of us today who maybe we are going through an intense time of loss. Not, I'm, I'm talking about loss bigger than what I had to watch yesterday with my Gators playing the Las Vegas Bowl. In my mind, it felt like at that point, some of what I saw in that game, it couldn't look much worse for a Gator fan. It was sad, it was pathetic. But this is even greater loss than that. 
Because some of us, we've lost loved ones, and we feel like right now we can't go on. Some of us, we've lost jobs. We, we've lost our position. We've, we've lost things that we thought were ours forever. And we have given up, and our hope is gone. And we feel like there is no hope. But today, we are in a place where we remember Jesus Christ is here. And where Jesus is, there is always hope. Christ can bring life to a stump. He can resurrect our lives. He can change us. This is a prophecy of Isaiah quoted in Matthew chapter 12, verses 20 and 21. A bruised reed he will not break. That means no matter how much you may have felt like one time you were, you were straight, tall, you were proud, you had it together, and you've been snapped, and you're hanging like this, Christ isn't going to break you. A smoldering wick, he's not going to quench until he brings justice to victory, and in his name, the Gentiles will hope. We're those Gentiles. Through Jesus, there is hope. There is transformation. This time of year is our time to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ can make a difference in the life of any person who comes to him. I love what Paul writes about him in Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. But God being rich in mercy. And, and Paul has been writing to a bunch of people who at one time were stumps in the book of Ephesians. But God being rich in mercy, he saw you stumps. Because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. You're the fruit of that branch. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that's an embrace. We're beside Christ. He's with us so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. If you feel like a stump today and you feel there's no hope for you, I'm just going to speak Ephesians 2, 7. In coming ages, he might show you the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards you in Christ Jesus. Christmas isn't the time we look at what we've lost but it is the time that we look to what God is going to do and how he can change our situations. I love that it goes on in Isaiah's prophecy. And once again, Isaiah probably had no idea exactly what he meant here in verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. What's that saying there? It's just simply saying this. It's saying whatever you're needing today, the Holy Spirit can work it in your life. And we may say, oh, well, that was for Jesus. He operated in those things. But Jesus said it was good for us. He told the disciples it was good that he was going to ascend to heaven because the Holy Spirit was going to come and work with us directly. And so all the ways that he worked in the life of Jesus, he now works in our life. And so maybe you feel like you're really dumb right now. You don't know what to do. Well, the Holy Spirit's here to give you wisdom and to help you understand what needs to happen. He's here to, to give you counsel and show you what's right and to give you the power that you need, that you need to know and understand. You can understand the way God's going to work. You can, you can understand how to relate to God because the Holy Spirit is here to guide, to lead, and to help us. God hasn't forgotten us. His power is on us. Maybe we have been through devastating, terrible circumstances. And, and it seems like everything is gone. But we are reminded here at Christmas. That the way things may seem is not how they are if Christ is on our side. Because God is with us. And he will guide us. And he will grow us. It amazes me, and I've told the story before. There was a guy I went to Southeastern with, our, our seminary for people that are going into ministry in the assemblies. And uh, this guy, he, had been a, he was a Teen Challenge graduate, and, and he'd, been, he'd grown up on the streets. He'd been a heroin addict most all of his life. And he, was, he wasn't just a drug addict. He was a guy who'd completely burn his mind out. And it was one of those, you know, that real slow speech, and you could just, you just, you just think, why is this guy here? 
Why, why would he be a part of this? There's, there's, there's no ministry for this guy. I, I just don't see it. But you know what? What we see with our eyes isn't what God sees. And one day he comes to class and he says, I got a verse God's given me. And he said, God told me he's going to restore what the canker worm's eaten in my life. That's nice. We'll believe with you on that one. Let me tell you something. The one who can bring life to a stump can restore what the canker worm has eaten in your life. He can give you a new day, and he can give you a new start. And before long, this guy who was at the bottom of the curve was at the top of the curve in our class and grades. And by the time he graduated, you couldn't tell that he'd ever done drugs in his life. I mean, God restored that guy's mind. He made him a communicator. He, he restored that which was lost. I serve that same God. You serve that same God. And of Christmas, oh, yes, amen. And if our Christmas is just about trees, I love trees. I love the songs. I love the candy. I love the fudge. I love everything Christmas. But if that's what it's about for us, we're missing what Christmas is. Christmas is about the Savior coming to save, to rescue. And so I'm wanting to speak right now to all you stumps that are in here. Some of you were stumps last year, but God's grown you too much for us to call you a stump anymore. But some of y'all are stumps this year. Hold on. Be ready. God has not forgotten you. The power of the Spirit is here, and Christ is here, and He's going to turn your life around. Put on your seatbelt and get ready for the ride of your life. Hallelujah. Will you bow your heads with me across this building? And as you are, the most important thing today, right now in this place, is that you have Jesus Christ in your life. And we usually have you raise your hand, and if, if you're watching on live stream right now, you can just you can pray a prayer right there on live stream, asking God to forgive you of your sins and give you a new start. But this morning, I'm wanting to do things a little different in this sanctuary what I want to do this morning is if you are here and you're a stump right now and you've been going through a lot, I'm going to open this front up and I'm going to have some people come up here and they're going to be here to pray for you. If I can just get our board members, our pastors up here this morning, they're up here. These are praying people that are here to minister to you. And if you are here and you are not where you need to be with Jesus Christ, you're not a Christian, this is your time. I want you to come up here and tell them that you need Jesus. And, and before you leave this place this morning, you're going to know Jesus. You're going to, you're going to have some, the growth begin in your life. Maybe you're a Christian here and you're just going through a lot and you feel like everything important to you has been cut down and, and you're there as a stump and you're not sure there's any kind of future for you. You're needing prayer. These people are up here this morning to pray with you and we're going to believe that God is getting ready to do something incredible in your life. Will you stand across the building this morning? And this morning, whatever may be going on in your life, if you need prayer... You want to be a Christian? You, you need some help with the battle you're going through? You want to see what God can do for you? Come up here and have them pray with you. And we're going to believe that God's going to turn things around and begin to grow in your life what only He can do.